So the next margin of error that we're going to look at in terms of types of calculations is when you're comparing two dependent groups in a sample. So what I mean by dependent groups here is something like a question national versus labor, if you want to know who's leading. So if a voter changes their mind from national to labor, both of the percentages are going to be changed. National will go down, labor will go up, and so it's a dependent situation here. So when we've got that, they're both impacted, so they both have a change, and our margin of error for this one is going to be that we are going to use 2 times the margin of error, or 2 times 1 over the square root of n. And the reason for that is that we have to accommodate the fact that, well, national could actually be at the lowest end of its confidence interval, and labor could be at the highest end of its confidence interval. And that gives us a total distance between them of two of those margin of errors. We'll see how it works out, though. So again, dependent events, you'll have to make a decision here when you're doing the test about the difference between independent and dependent event. The difference here is that we see if an independent event, for instance, if we're comparing male to female voters, if a female voter changes her mind, the male percentage hasn't changed, so it's completely independent. The two groups we're comparing, male and female, if one of them has a slight change, it doesn't actually affect the other one, so it's an independent event. And again, in this case with national versus labor, if a national voter changes their mind and goes to labor, it does actually have an effect. So they're what we call dependent events. So our rule for these ones, again, is going to be two times the margin of error. So if we have this question, can we say that national is leading labor? So national versus labor, what's our actual difference? So going back to our poll again, we know national is at 50 and labor is at 29, and we'll need to use that information. And still, that we've got a sample size of 1,002. So n again will be 1,002. And if we have our margin of error calculated using our rule of thumb, we're going to use 1 over the square root of 1002, which is equal to 0 0.03159. And again, times it by 100 to get your percentage. Don't forget that. We're going to end up with a result that's going to give us plus or minus 3.1 sorry, 3.2 percent. So ensuring that we're actually keeping track that we do need a plus or a minus there because it has to go above or below. Now to use our rule, this 2 times the MOE, or if you want to think about it as 2 times 1 over the square root of n, which is what we've just done, we need to go 2 times 3.2 percent and that's going to get us plus or minus 6.4 percent. So we know our confidence interval for making the comparison between these two groups is going to be 6.4 percent. So first step that we're going to do is find the actual difference. So here we have national versus labor. So that's 50 minus 29 and we say that there's a difference of 29 percent. Our second step, we're going to use the plus or minus 2 times the MOE, which is this one, to compare our difference. So we're going to apply that on the difference that we just calculated, which is this one here. So if we have 21 in the middle, we need to go 21 plus 6.4 on one side and 21 minus 6.4 on the other side. So our confidence interval here, um, I might just give myself more room here, 21 minus 6.4 to 21 plus 6.4 as our percentages. So we get 14.6% to 27.4%. Sorry if you're running out of room on your paper. I think I write pretty big, but... Um, so what we've got is that this is our 95% confidence interval. 
is the 14.6 to 27.4 percent. So what we can say in terms of answering our question, can we say that national is leading labor using our margin of error? Well we do have the evidence to support this because we're saying here even with our uncertainty national could be between 14.6 percent ahead of labor or as much as 27.4 percent ahead of labor. So we would interpret that by saying we are 95 percent confident that national leads labor by between um, 14.6 percent to 27.4 percent. And this confidence interval does not include zero. So this idea again is that if we had zero in there, if we had a negative number, it might show us that actually labor could be winning um, and that national could be behind. So for comparing de dependent gr groups again, the key things to remember is that we have to decide if they're dependent and then do two times the margin of error. So once you've figured out what that is, you'll go back to finding your difference between them. In this case, we got 21%. And so we're trying to look, well, how low could that difference be and how big could that difference actually be in the population? Here we found it could be anywhere between 14.6 and 27.4. And so in this case, we can be confident that national is leading because in best and worst case scenarios, it is leading with that confidence interval, which is the same thing here about that idea that the confidence interval does not include zero. And that's what we used in the inference internal as well. This idea of if your confidence interval has zero or not to claim if there's a difference. So here, it's clear that according to the margin of error, if we use it, national is actually leading labor in the polls. Again, if it had been closer, if it had been like 41 to 42 with that margin of error, we wouldn't know who's actually winning.